Feast TV is brought to you with the support from Missouri Wines, Caldi's Coffee, Old Time Produce, and the Raphael Hotel. Today we're going from farm to table. I'm Kat Neville and this is Feast TV. Eating local is no longer a trend. It is now how we expect to eat. And so in this episode, we're going to explore a number of different ways that people are connected directly to the folks who are growing our food. Our first stop is in Springfield, Missouri at the Farmer's Market of the Ozarks. Check it out. Farmer's Market of the Ozarks has been here for about six years. We were this idea of building a place that community could gather where local foods could be sourced from all over the southern region of Missouri. What we're really doing is connecting people one-on-one -on -one with the, the person whose hands are in the dirt, digging and planting and harvesting and letting them truly um, understand those processes and understand how their food's being grown. We are open year-round, every Saturday. We usually are averaging about 90 to 95 vendors. Our focus is local foods and bringing in those producers who are growing diverse products across the region, but also creating a gathering place that's accessible for people who maybe normally wouldn't be at a farmer's market. Right now in our current culture, there can be somewhat of a disconnect with people and their food and, and where it comes from, and so I think Farmer's Market is so important because it is a connecting point for the community and the farmers and where they're getting their food. And at the grocery store, you can go pick up produce or meat, um, but you don't really get to know the story behind that. You don't know who farmed it. You don't know their farming practices. You can maybe read a label, but that's not the same as getting to connect with someone one-on-one. -on -one. And so we really see the Farmer's Market, um, number one, giving people the opportunity to shop local that might not be able to do so before, and um, then also educating people on their food, where it's coming from, and then also creating sustainability within the region. Um, when you spend local, your dollars stay local and that's a really exciting thing I think for this region. Britain Farm is the name of our company. It's a family farm that's been in our family for uh, five generations now. We raise grass-fed beef, grass-fed, grass-finished. We also raise pasture-raised pork, pasture-raised chicken, and chicken eggs. We have uh, dry-aged steaks. We dry-age our steaks 14 to 21 days. That's something that not a lot of people offer, and that's a big seller for us. On the pork side of things, we offer a product called Hillbilly Bacon that a lot of people don't offer. We enjoy selling at the farmer's market because we get to interact with people on a face-to-face -face basis. They have questions, we have answers. It develops a trust, and most people want to feel involved with the food that they are buying to eat. I'm with May May's Sweet Shop. May May is my daughter. When I retired, my daughter came down from Kansas City and we started this business. We have about 40 years of restaurant experience and we came in and, and we just do the farmer's market now. We make all kinds of sweets. We make homemade caramels, cinnamon rolls, homemade pies from the uh, great-grandmother's recipe. We make breads. Our brioche bread is my daughter's specialty. It's more of a French bread with lots of eggs, butter, and honey. Her cinnamon rolls are always sold out, and that is made with our brioche. It's a whole different uh, slant on a cinnamon roll. Our pies and breads are made fresh within 12 hours. I make pies all day. My daughter stays up all night long and bakes, so everybody gets fresh bread. The 
cool thing about the Midwest is we really offer a lot of diversity in what's able to be grown here. We have really good soil, we have a lot of diversity in climate, so it really enables us to grow a lot more than some other regions in the area. We literally see everything from apples to blueberries to strawberries to greens and potatoes and there, there's really, besides those really tropical fruits and, and citruses and things like that, we're really able to grow anything and so if there's something you want, there's a 98% chance you're going to be able to get it here, which is a really exciting thing for the community. We've been farming at Millsap Farms for 10 years now. We are year-round farmers. We grow all year long. Any vegetable that you can name, we grow it. And one of our places that we sell is here at Market. We love to come here because we get to know new people and get to connect people with what we do. Farmers Market of the Ozarks has been a great location for us to sell to our customers, partly because when the weather is a little bit less favorable outside, uh, we drop the sides like we did today and we can still uh, be here and our customers can be comfortable and we can be comfortable while we provide good produce to them. The cool thing about where we're housed is that we're able to pull down our walls, squish everyone inside and turn on the heat and that means that we're able to offer produce meat, eggs year-round. We have multiple vendors that grow hydroponically. They use greenhouses, high tunnels. So it doesn't matter what time of the year it is, we will have produce, we will have meat. We're located in a development called Farmer's Park. It was literally developed specifically to house a farmer's market in the middle of the development. It's super sustainable, it's all run on solar power. We have a lot of green space here. We have a community gardens actually down in the other part of the development. The whole development in general is really focused on sustainability, on community, and on education. One thing we're really excited about when we're open year-round is that we get to challenge the community to eat seasonally and to be willing to change their diet based on what's available and it really helps you have this nutrition-packed diet because you're getting more diversity and then you're also getting to try different things. And knowing where it's from, knowing who's growing it, it's not being shipped in from another country or another state or another region. It's coming right here from the soil that we're walking on every day. And um, we see our customers become really, really passionate about that and really proud of their food. And so that's something that we are really excited to facilitate here. We love being able to service the community. Um, every Saturday, rain, shine, snow, we're here, um, ready to offer up local goods. So we just visited a pretty traditional farmer's market there in Springfield, and our next stop is in Washington, Missouri, where Todd Geisert, who is a third-generation pork farmer, has opened up Farm to You Market, where he's not only showcasing his own products, but the products of other regional producers. <laughs> You're not going to get much better than that right there. No, that is awesome. So how old are these, these piglets? These guys here are about four weeks old, five weeks old. Oh. And what breed? We use a, a cross there, so every pig here has at least 50% uh, Berkshire in them. And then we got some Duroc as part of the other mix. Is this three generations? I'm fifth generation. Yeah. Farm's been in the family since 1887. It's been in the Geyser name since 1916. Has it always been a hog operation? Hogs has always been part of the rotation. Back in the day, you know, cattle was part of the operation too, but uh, we haven't had any cattle on the farm since I was in uh, junior high, so. You know, we've done it this way for 100 years on a pasture system. The same concept is, is here, how the rotation is, you know, but you'll see some of the little bit more newer equipment. It's done with tractors now instead of horse-drawn wagons. Sure. Different things like that. That's what you call true pasture-raised pork right there. She's putting on a show for you. Yeah. <laughs> she knows she's on TV. So what's in the feed? Uh, corn and soybean meal is, is the major ingredient, and then we get a whole list of vitamins and minerals that they get. And it's an all-vegetarian diet. There's no animal byproducts or anything. We don't use any growth hormone or different things like that. Yeah, they obviously love it. When yeah. they get used to the tractor coming and stuff like that, you know, they're coming, coming towards the tractor and seeing what's coming out of the loader bucket. It's like a little salad bar for them. Oh, big salad bar, yeah. <laughs> you know, all the extra produce from the store all comes here and we convert it to bacon for everybody. I love that. <laughs> You 
have been working with local chefs for years. We and started in 2008. You know, we had I think four or five customers. You know, Zappington Market, Local Harvest mm -hmm. uh, were a couple of our early on customers, and then you know started dealing with some of the chefs. We're up to over 80 different restaurants and grocery stores every week that we're supplying. That's amazing. And now you have your own restaurant and cafe. Correct. And also a market. The reason why we opened the market was different people were looking for ways of getting more local stuff than what they were able to get at a farmer's market. So what we created was a true local grocery store of all local products. You know, we're going to be able to walk around that store and tell you where everything comes from. And it's all small producers having a hard time getting their product out to market. And that was part of the concept of what we're doing there is trying to bring a little guy to you. Everything is a local. Everything here is within a 200 miles. There's just a couple exceptions to that rule. The crop is raised here. The livestock is raised here. The stuff is processed here. It's all sold here. So people don't realize that over 95% of their dollar that they spend here stays here in the area. Farm to You Market is the retail side, and Farm to You is the distribution side. We're in St. Louis, we're in Columbia, we're in Springfield, Missouri, we're in Kansas City, Champaign, Illinois, Edwardsville, Illinois, Alton, Illinois. There are some things that are just sold here in, in the store, but there's other things that we take and, and distribute across the whole state. There are stories down every single aisle of the market, kind of tying all of the folks to you directly. Right. So can you kind of give me some insight on yeah, some of the so folks? Everything that you go down here, there's a reason why they're here. These beans here, they're raised down in uh, House Springs, Missouri. We can tell you the farmer, we can take you right to his farm and where things are going. The different honeys, mm -hmm. this guy here is from the Union area. You know, we've taken some of the different herbs, some of them we grow here in house. And you've got sugar, lentils, you have maple syrup. I mean, you have fresh peanut butter. Yeah, that's, you don't get much better than that. You know. That peanut butter there, along with this traffic jam, that's what Todd Geyser starts out with every morning. Oh, and it's rhubarb and strawberry and cranberry. I love it. There's an ice cream that we work with that when she makes a salted caramel with bacon. Uh, and she uses your bacon. She uses our bacon. You know, when we first started working with her, she just made a regular salted caramel. I said, you need to put bacon in it. She goes, oh, baloney. <laughs> it's one of her best selling ice creams now. I'm sure it is. So now we're in kind of your territory. We're, we're, we're in my territory. I'm, I'm, I'm good with the protein side of things. I've been covering food in this region for almost 20 years, and I'm seeing products from people I've never even heard of. Mm -hmm. So it's really exciting that you're able to bring all of these local producers together in one spot where people can conveniently come in and grab some coconut butter and some granola and you know whatever else it is that they need along with sausages and cheeses and even local wine and spirits. Right. And it extends into the kitchen with the cafe. So the cafe helps showcase some of our foods you know, quite often on Saturday and Sunday, people come in for breakfast or come in for lunch and do their shopping. You know, we, we do an awesome meal and then we also do a true farm to table dinner every Saturday night. So we're gonna get in the kitchen and we're going to see Chef Bailey make your famous Reuben. This is kind of one of your biggest sellers, isn't it? We're known for our Reuben sandwiches. And so when you are cooking in the kitchen, you're using these same products that are out here. So tell me what's on that Reuben. So the Reuben is going to have some grass-fed beef from the Beckman Farm out of Loose Creek, Missouri. It's going to have some sauerkraut on there from uh, Farmer Dan out of Ashland, Missouri. It'll have our house-made dressings and stuff like that on it, and it'll have the bread from Companion on there. CSAs are another way to get your local fix, and in St. Louis, Max Local Buys offers a grocery bag subscription, and they just opened up a diner that serves grass-fed smash burgers. Let's head there now. So Max Local Buys, when did that launch? We incorporated in 2013, after about six years of doing it charitably. The beginnings of Max Local Buys are extremely humble and very organic. Organizing meat buys, meat shares, 
was something I did uh, because I wanted to eat better meat at the end of the day. And an email list of friends and family over the course of about six years grew to be about 300 people. Uh, wow. And uh, spent a lot of time being the organizer of these things. And it was, like I said, nobody was making any money. We were just a group of folks who wanted to eat better quality proteins. Did you do this because you couldn't find it in the market? Uh, honestly, I did it because you get a better price when you buy a whole animal. I would send out an email and I would say, hey, I, I know about this farmer. Does anybody want to go in on the next buy? And based on the, the response, we would buy one and eventually we were buying two and three and four pigs at a time. And my wife said, why don't you just incorporate and do this like you've been doing? You're obviously very passionate about it. Why not, why not give it a go? Yeah. And so um, with her approval and certainly support, we launched Max Local Buys. The initial products were really just two things, a food subscription and these meat shares. Previously, you were just supplying people like through the CSA, and now you have a market, you're actually running a kitchen. How did Max Local Eats come to be? I really like smash burgers, and I'd been making these dry aged smash burgers for a while at home for yeah. like three or four years, and I knew they were really good. And I said, you know, if I was ever gonna open a restaurant, I would open a little South City diner, you know, and just sling these awesome smash burgers and short order stuff, and, uh, and that'd be it. And literally, I got this phone call about an opportunity to open a restaurant. And I was the like, universe all came it together was to make it happen. Strange. It was <laughs> oddly strange, and it was it was great. It was a great opportunity, and then to also have a market right under the same roof, uh, in the same building, it was kind of a no-brainer. Absolutely. So, what kind of learning curve did you have? <laughs> So much. <laughs> uh, just understanding uh, the amount of work that goes into running a restaurant and a kitchen, that was probably the biggest thing of all. Once you commit to some regular restaurant hours, um, it changes the game. It changes the game. And it is a lot of work, right? Especially if you're making things from scratch and not just dumping things out of bottles. Truly, you're taking a diner approach to the food. I mean, a smash burger, number one, is my favorite kind of burger because you get those crispy edges, and yep. I love it when it's nice and thin and it kind of caramelizes. But you're making it with dry aged beef. Uh, I think it's a great thing to say. Oh, we dry age a whole cow for four weeks, and then we turn the whole cow into ground beef. We don't take the tenderloin out, we don't take any of the ribs out, we don't take anything out. It all goes into that patty. Theoretically, a little bit of each part, yeah. but certainly all from the same cow, which is- That's un unusual. Unusual and uniquely awesome, yeah. for sure. So do you think we can get in the kitchen and see how some of those burgers come together? I think we can. Okay. Sounds great. I'm excited. You're gonna teach me how to smash them? I'll teach you how to smash them. So what is the secret to a good smash burger besides dry aged beef? Yes, besides the dry aged beef. Uh, there's a couple things. Um, in order to get a good crispy uh, on the edge smash burger, you really have to use a really small portion to patty. Um, two ounces you said. We like two ounces. Uh, anything bigger than that and you get a lot more moisture and that's going to inhibit the caramelization. Got it. Which is the best part. Which is the best part. There's no doubt about that. The other thing uh, that's going on here is when you put your portions on the flat top, within basically 30 seconds, you want to get that burger in the shape that you want it in. If you wait too long, when you go to smash it, you're going to smash all your juice out. Oh. Make sense? Yes. dry aging due to the flavor? In this case, uh, beef is about 70, 75% water. When we dry age the cows, um, we lose about 10%. It's literally less watered down. The longer you let that hang, the more the natural enzymes in the meat itself go to work on the, the protein fibers. And the longer it goes, it almost gets funky. Yeah, that's what you want. Correct, <laughs> correct. There's not a sauce in the world that will imitate that flavor that you get. So our classic burger is gonna be ketchup mustard, pickled onion. Got it. You're in business. That doesn't look too bad. It looks fantastic. Thank you. So tell me about the market. Like what is the experience of the market? What can people get there? It's one stop shopping for some really awesome locally produced items. Everything from 
uh, milk and cheese and eggs to retail cuts of proteins, uh, certainly pork, beef, uh, and poultry. How's it going? I'm good. Three choices of soup. I've got a curried butternut, I've got a regular butternut, and then I've got that ham and bean as well. And lard, and there's bread if you guys want some. Thanks for coming out, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. How did you become a customer of Max? Uh, we started as friends and just fell in love with the business in general. And I've met a lot of the farmers just from grocery bag pickups and other things with Max. And I just feel good supporting people that I know. Mac and these guys, they kind of plan it for us. I've never picked up a grocery bag where the ingredients in the bag didn't make sense. It's a really great way to cook healthy for our family. How about Mac's Local Eats? Which is your favorite burger? Uh, the pork burger. It is awesome. Get the pork burger, definitely do a double stack. Don't go with one, get two. <laughs> get two patties, it's delicious. This whole business, none of this was, this was not a goal. This was not, I was, this was no intention. This was, you know, like I tell everybody, that restaurant was not some concept I've been sitting on for five years, just waiting to execute, no. This is me going, okay, we have these products. What is the best way to kind of execute and serve them as food? Okay, I have my grocery bag in hand, and now I'm going to head into the kitchen and get cooking. In preparation for the cooking demo for this episode, I wanted to make sure that I was focusing in on the theme, which is, hello, farm to table. This is what is great about belonging to a CSA, Community Supported Agriculture, where you essentially buy in to the entire bounty of the farm before the season begins and then you get your payoff throughout the year. And the way that Mac focuses his grocery bags is he does produce, meat, eggs, bread, and then he also does what he calls a treat. And so I got everything from meatballs from Circle B Ranch to locally made spaghetti from Midwest Pasta Company, local honey, I have some marinara, and then greens, salanova, spinach, pork chops. I have some fresh picked baby ginger from Such and Such Farm, some blackberries that were frozen last season, also from Such and Such, some beautiful eggs from Rustic Roots. These onions are from Bolin Family Farms. So the idea is, you get all these beautiful things and then you get to play around with what it is that you're going to make. So what I decided is I wanted to focus in on the pork chops because these blackberries are really looking good to me. So I want to make a blackberry sauce with a little bit of ginger, some of these beautiful pecans and the onions. I'm gonna put that on top of a grilled pork chop and we're gonna make ourselves a salad. So I'm gonna get started. So first off, I'm just gonna toss some of the greens in the salad bowl. This is Salanova, which you might not be familiar with that name, but it is a, a head lettuce. It is frilly and a little bit more sturdy than a typical like butter lettuce or romaine. So I'm just gonna kind of break this up a little bit. So this is some spinach. Nuts are a fantastic addition to salads. They add flavor, obviously, but also a wonderful crunch that plays off of the soft greens. This is ginger. You don't need a lot of ginger when you're making something. It has a really intense flavor. I'm just gonna chop up my onions. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and start grilling up this pork chop. I have salted and peppered my pork chops and they have a lot of fat, so I'm not gonna bother to put any oil in this grill pan. I'm gonna let that do its thing. As I was thinking about how I wanted to add some depth of flavor to this blackberry sauce that I'm making, I decided that a reduction of chambersin would be a nice way to start. Chambersin is a relatively light red wine, especially in comparison with Norton. And this one is from Red Moose Vineyard, which is in Salem, Missouri. 
So I'm just gonna pour, I don't know, half a cup or so into my pan and I'm gonna let it reduce. So we've reached a syrupy consistency with the wine. I'm gonna go ahead and put in my ginger because I want that to cook for a little bit. In go the blackberries. I tasted my sauce, obviously. As you're cooking, you should be tasting so you can adjust seasoning. And I think it needs a little bit of sweetness. And rather than reaching for the sugar, I have honey that came in my CSA grocery bag. So I'm just gonna add some of that. Pork is one of those proteins that it loves fruit and it loves sweetness, kind of like duck. I'm gonna go ahead and stir in these onions so the flavor can be incorporated. Feeling good about where my blackberry sauce is, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the heat while the pork chops kind of finish up in this grill pan and then we'll serve. Time to put my grocery bag dinner together. The pork chops. I'm gonna dress my salad, a little bit of olive oil. And then rather than having vinegar in my salad, this is going to be my acid. So here you go. Quick, healthy, easy, and straight from a local store. This is perfect. I'm going to pair this wonderful entree salad with the same chamberson that I used in the blackberries. It is a juicy, very berry forward wine. So thank you for joining me on this episode of Feast TV and I will see you at the farmer's market.